Hi, welcome back to BK Garage. In this video, I'm going to be doing some upgrades to the rear end on my 1970 Monte Carlo. No chunks, it's a good sign. We'll let that finish draining, get it jacked up and get the wheels off it. Pull the retainer bolt out. It's nice to see that one's not broke off. I found that before. Pull the bolt out and about that much of it comes. There we go, one C-clip out. Right hand one came out easy. Got it. Okay, yeah, next we'll drop the carrier out of there.
I'm not going to pull the pinion out. The bearings feel good. Like this rear end didn't have many miles on it. I just want to get away from the stock axles and factory style posi. Putting a set of Mosier axles and a spool in it. So right now I'm pressing the new bearings onto the spool. So I don't want to push on the face of the bearing. I found a couple of locking collars that just nicely fit in there. So I've got one underneath. I already did the one bearing. I had the spool in the freezer for a couple hours to try and shrink it a little. Start it gently, and then slide them together nice. Make sure that's lined up dead center. There we go. Bearings are both bottomed out. Well, down the rabbit hole we go. Got that carrier pulled out, set it on the bench beside my new spool. The spool takes a different series of gears than what was on here. I knew there was a spacer in this rear end, so I was hoping it was the right gears, but they're not. So those will be here in a couple days. So I guess the pinion's coming out. Uh, the pattern looks nice on those. It's too bad I gotta take these out. Nothing wrong with them. With the new engine, I was just worried about this rear end holding up to the horsepower. End up breaking something on the launch, especially with the way it was set up with a spacer on that carrier. Next up, I'm gonna pull the brake backing plates off. I've got the brake lines undone already. Get the four bolts out of them, take them off, and I've gotta cut these snouts off the ends of the axle tubes. So I'm putting a set of C-clip eliminators in here. A couple of those bolts twisted off and were seized in the holes, but a couple of locks with a hammer and they seem to come off. So I'll pop the original bearings and seals out of here. I've got to cut these tubes off. Here's my new pinion. And it'll have the depth engraved on the end. So 2.795 inches is what we're gonna go for. So I'm gonna start with a 20 thousandth thick shim. And I made myself some setup bearings. I took an old set and then took a flap wheel on my die grinder and cleaned them out inside. Just opened them up a little bit. So now they'll actually slip on and off. They're still snug, but you can take them on and off easy without having to press them. I'm not using a crush sleeve in this rear end, I'm using a solid sleeve. Let's put our sleeve on, and I'm going to start with a 20 thou and a 12 thou shim on there for setting the preload. 
there's my front bearing. Same thing, took a flap wheel to the inside of that, and cleaned it out so it slips on and off. So I'll get this into the diff, tighten the yoke down onto it, and then take some measurements and see where our pinion's at. First issue, pinion yoke won't slide on. Right there, there's a spline that's just a little bit mushed on the end. So I've got the pinion in. Played around with the shims for the preload a little bit. So I've got a 15 thou, a 12 thou, and a 10 thou in there right now. And it's got some preload on it. Any thicker shims than that, it had play. So what I'm doing, so I've got a nice straight edge, heavy straight edge, resting on a couple bolts here on the housing. And I'm measuring down to where my bearing caps bolt on. So that should be axle center line. Two point two two five inches. Two point two two five. I'll measure to my pinion. Five point oh two five. So we punch that into the calculator. There's what we get. 2.8 inches. We're shooting for 2.795. So we're within 5 thou. <clears throat> so I've got the spool and the crown gear in. Put some shims in. It's checking backlash right now. About 32 thou, way too much. So I'm going to move some shims from the right side to the left and move my crown gear over. Try and get this down to 8 thou. Okay, I moved a 25 thou shim from the right to the left. Ten thou backlash. Little too much yet. I'm shooting for eight. So I'll pop that apart again and see if there's maybe a 30 thou that I can switch from side to side. Put the 25 back on the right and see if I can pull a 30 and move over. Okay, I added another 5 thou shim to the left and pulled 5 thou out of the right. We're dead on our 8 thou backlash. Okay. Time to check the pattern. I'd say it's a little close to the inside of the gear. And on the back side, I think it's a little close back to the outside. I'd have to change the pinion shims. Well, there's with another 5 thou pinion shim. I sent some pictures to a guy that's a pro at doing this. He figures out a little more yet. It's getting closer. That's the coast side of the gear there. We'll pop it apart again, add another shim. So put another five thou shim in the pinion. Oh, 
That looks pretty good. I'm gonna double check the backlash. Let's make sure it didn't move too much. Yeah, it definitely tightened up. It's only about four thou there. We'll go from there. Well, it's been apart a couple more times. I'd say that's got it. Ended up with 40 thou of shims underneath of the pinion. The second last time, my backlash tightened right up to 4 thou. So I moved a 5 thou shim from the left to the right. Move it over. And that opened it back up to 9. So then I added another 5 underneath the pinion to get my pattern moved over. And the backlash stayed right at 9 thou. So I'm going to leave it there. Pull this back out one more time, get my pinion preload dialed in perfect, and then I'll press on my actual bearings that I'm going to be using because I've got those mock-up bearings on the pinion yet. So we'll take it apart about twice more, then it can go together to stay. Well, that was just about bad. Went to press the bearing onto the pinion. It's just getting it lined up. I thought, I better double check my shims. If there was only one on there, there should have been two. The other one was stuck to the back of the setup bearing. So I had oiled it just when I went to check preload. And the oil made the shim stick to it. It's a good thing I double checked. That could have been bad. Okay, I got the new bearings on here. Setting up the pinion preload. It's fairly hard to twist by hand. Ideally, I would have a torque wrench that measures inch pounds. But you can't use a click type. You need a beam type or a dial. One of the dial one. So I'm using an old beam style foot pounds torque wrench. What this calls for is 14 to 19 inch pounds. So I'm looking for about a pound and a half. So I'm looking for about one and a half foot pounds. I'd say that's what I've got. So I'm gonna call it good there. Pop the oak back off, put the seal in and it's ready to do the final assembly. So this is the last time the pinion nut's going on, so I'm using the new one now. Up until now, I've been using the old pinion nut. I put some red Loctite on it. And I'm not using a crush sleeve in this diff. I'm using a solid spacer with shims. So that way, if I've ever got to pull it apart, change a seal, anything, I just torque it back up and my pinion preload is reset. I don't have to worry about trying to get it in the exact same spot again with the crush sleeve. Well, this is kind of awkward. I'm trying to hold the pinion yoke with a pipe wrench. And put 125 foot-pounds on the nut with the torque wrench. I've slipped a couple times already. Punched myself in the chest pretty good. <laughs> Got her. So that's fairly stiff. Feels like it's got a lot of preload on it. But when I put the torque wrench on, it's just right. And actually once I spin it a few times, it gets a little easier too. Should be good there. Now it's ready to put the spool and the crown gear back in. So I've been very careful to keep my shim packs left and right.
trickiest part seems to be to keep this right hand race lined up. It wants to twist a little on the way in. Just use a soft mallet. If I let this go now, it'll stay in there. It's not super tight, but it's firm. If you give it a good hard pull with your hands, it comes out. So I'm using aftermarket axles with C-clip eliminators. So there's no pounding seals anymore. Just putting a bead of silicone behind the brake backing plate. I got another tube that came with uh, C clip eliminators. It says it's special stuff for aluminum. I don't know if it makes any difference or not, but we'll use it just to be safe. Let's just put a good B to this in between the C clip eliminator and the axle tube. So there's the new axle, that's a C-clip eliminator, for those of you who aren't familiar with them. That converts it to a press-on style bearing like a Ford. So if I ever break an axle, it can't just come out the end of the housing like it would normally with a Chevy setup. These are kind of a pain to get started. It'll hold your tongue just right. Looks good. There's a little silicone squishy note all the way around. I'll torque those bolts up and it's ready to put the cover on. Last thing to put together under here is the new rear cover. 
So I'm using, <clears throat> I'm using this guy. So these put preload on your bearing caps. I wiped all the surfaces off with acetone. Now these get torqued to five foot pounds up against the caps. And the jam nuts get 10 foot pounds. Well, that's not much. Let that dry for a couple hours and fill it up with oil. I had to make one little modification. Because of the added thickness of this cover, the brake line bracket wasn't long enough anymore, so I added an inch into it. Now it'll go back into place. This is ready for brake drums. One problem. I went from 7 16 to half inch studs. Take that to the drill press, open them up. I checked this center register with a pair of calipers to make sure it actually fits in the drums because I've run into that before with aftermarket axles that I actually had to have my drums opened up. These fit. I'll go bore out the holes and the drums are ready to go on. That's better. Last step, probably an important one not to forget brake lines back on. Got my assistant in the car. I'm gonna bleed the brakes now. Brakes on. Off, on, off, that one's good. Basically just need to bleed the lines on the rear axle and the wheel cylinders, so it's not bad. Okay, brakes on, off, on, 
off, on, off. Press them down, see if the pedal feels firm. Okay, let off. The only thing left to do on that rear end is fill it with oil, put the wheels on, it's ready to go. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As usual, please like, share, subscribe, tell your grandma, and I'll see you on the next one.